Hello and welcome back to my video response. I think I'm on uh, six, part six. Okay. In ten minutes, anyone I've ever seen. And you still didn't address my last video. Let me make it clear. I asked. Oh, as far as that's concerned, um, I haven't been on in a while, and I haven't had a chance to. So relax, it's coming. You in the last video to give me a law that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, broke. Either secular or moral, you have failed to do this. You gave me typical Christian rhetoric. I gave you... No, you asked, give me sources from around the time of Muhammad teaching that it's wrong to do this. What I did was give you sources that were older than Muhammad from the Bible because you said you can't come into the future and go back into the past and say that this was wrong. But if I go even further back in the past, saying and a teaching from the Middle East, from people saying this is wrong, then I can convict him based upon that. Moreover, the fact that it's that he claims to be a prophet of God, and I'm giving the teachings of uh, the Book of God, and this is more moral than what your prophet did, and he went against that, I can judge him according to that as well. I can judge what your God said on how to divorce little girls. And it's funny the hypocrisy you show here. Because as far as 65 verse 4 of the Quran is saying, you just say, well, I don't know about that verse. Yet you blame Christians for it and say they don't know anything about the Bible. It is as transparent as glass. This is all your religion has to offer. Rhetoric. I grew up a Southern Baptist. Don't feed me rhetoric. I know it when I see it. Where's my answer even? All you're doing is a classic bait and switch tactic. You're diverting all of the questions and thinking away from Islam and switching it over to the Bible. And it's very simple to answer every one of the points you gave, and I have done so, and I will continue to do so. So this is typical Islamic responses. If they can't lie to you, if they realize you know stuff about Islam, and you know what their books teach about um, certain things and such as with the age of Aisha and they can't lie to you then they'll try and take the question off Islam and bring it towards Christianity I asked you to give me a moral or secular law that the Prophet Muhammad broke you couldn't do it all you could do is talk about the relations that a man had with his wife yet you could not give me you you didn't ask for a secular law. You went against the secular laws, saying you can't judge him by the secular laws of today. Jeez, can you keep your lies together? Any biblical verse or legal edit of his time that made it wrong. All you gave me was your own opinion. No, I quoted you from the Bible. Many times. That's not my opinion. This is the book of God. <laughs> what a joke. You know, even your own Bible, which I do not believe is the word of God, it talks about men who become worshippers of themselves, and you're worshipping your own opinion. Because you Wor How do you worship your own opinion? <laughs> and I quoted the Bible. It's not like I was giving my opinion even. <laughs> oh, my Lord, have mercy. Not given any specific biblical verse that prohibits... Marriage of the Prophet Muhammad I gave you at least three. And I can give you from Genesis to Revelation, talking about how it is wrong to be sexually immoral. There are verses that prohibit homosexuality, even though you have gay churches. No gay matches. You can uh, search it. Type in gay church. All right, and let's also type in alfatia.org. Here we, here we go. Let's open up a new window.
If this is a problem for you, for people to have gay churches, please explain to me this. As it's loading, all right. The very first chapter of the Quran is the biggest gay and lesbian organization in the world. And it's run and owned by Muslims. Welcome to Al Fatiha. As you see, we are in the process of building our new website in order to service. In, uh, okay, so it's on the website's under construction. Al Fatiha is dedicated to Muslims of all culture and ethnic backgrounds who are lesbians, gay, bisexual, transgender, transgender, intersex, queer, and questioning or exploring their sexual orientation and or gender identity and the families, friends, and allies. So, so if this is wrong for you, then uh, how come the biggest gay and lesbian organization in the world is called after the first chapter of the Quran? But your Bible specifically prohibits it. I'll give you that. Right. So then what's the point? If our Bible prohibits it, why even bring it up? This is stupid. You're the one offering rhetoric. Uh, Christians don't follow their Bible. If the Christians follow their Bible, then they would be following Luke uh, chapter 12, 26, which is what you're following because you hate all non-Christians and you want them to accept. <laughs> okay. You brought up Luke 14.26, typical, again, Muslim garbage dribble that they give to us. Let's see what it actually says. Luke 14.26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his, mo his mother and father and wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And, he, who, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So if you're agreeing with this verse, are you agreeing also with the next line under that we're to bear our cross, meaning Christ also went to the cross for us, and that the Bible teaches that, and so therefore you're rejecting the Quran? Um, no, but you want to use the Bible parts of it and reject parts. Anyways, let's continue reading. For which of you intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. And so, what he's saying is here is to count the cost of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Because if you claim to follow Christ and then you start to become persecuted by your family for it, and then you run back and say, oh, I reject Christ. People are going to mock you for that. And so he's saying what it means to follow Christ. Because after all, he's talking to a Jewish audience. And everybody knows the Jewish people became split up over Jesus Christ. Some were saying, no, no, it's through the law that we, fall, that we attain salvation. But the Jewish Christians... We're saying, no, it's through Jesus Christ that we have salvation. It's by the grace of God. Because the law kills, the law destroys when used improperly. Accept your views and your opinions. You want them to worship you. You want them to worship Actually, if we continue on in the very same book you gave, in Luke... Um, uh, Luke chapter 21 uh, and verse 10. Then he said to them, he's, uh, the context of what he's saying here is he's giving parables. Um, sorry, not parables. He's giving um, prophecies about the end time. And he says, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilence. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven but before all these things they will lay their hands on you and persecute you 
delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore, settle in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and a wi and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. So what he was teaching his disciples beforehand is to not put family in front of God. And even you yourself in your last video said not to do this. And I'm out of time, so stay tuned for the next one.